Salute to you for tuning in. This is my show, Kin Up, Kin Down. How vulnerable can you be? How transparent can you be? Um, how PC would you rather be? Would you rather sugarcoat it? Um, so Kin Up, you got to be extremely raw, you know, with whatever you're saying. And Kin Down, you know, you have to, that's when you want to tone down your expression, okay? Tell them, expression. Man, Ken Up, Ken Down, episode six. If you um, don't remember, I'll remind you. So when I sit on this, this is Ken Up. That means I got to be as transparent as possible. Um, and when I sit on this, that's Ken Down. I could be a little PC, you feel me? Um, first is first, we're going to touch on a taboo topic. Um, and I'm honestly going to Ken Down because... I like Rihanna. You know what I mean? So, I'm going to kick down. But, here's the thing, right? Um, so, I've been pondering on this. Rihanna and Chris Brown, that whole situation, right? It's self-defense. Right? But, at that time, how dare anybody even say that? How dare Chris Brown go to court? And uh, um, plead that, you know, or say that to to a judge, you know, from what I understand, if somebody attacks you first and you attack back, that's the essence of self-defense. Now, obviously, we live in a world of politics, right? Um, the truth don't matter. Even the law don't matter, right? Um, everything is how it, it is interpreted. Everything is about likability everything is about politics you know what i'm saying so it's about who has the power to dictate what things should be doesn't matter what is written you know what i'm saying so that's that's how the world operates but you know to me it's 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 self defense right um i remember in you know in a moment where there was a girl who was in my crib and she was drinking and you know she started just kind of like moving a little funny and like she got up and she dropped her glass and I'm like, damn, yo, you got to leave. You feel me? And then when I said that, cause the whole time she was like, I'm not drunk. And I'm just looking at her like, yeah, shorty, you are. And, and, and when she dropped the glass and I said, you got to leave, she walked up to me and she pushed me and I, I fell on the couch. And in that moment, I could have gotten up and pushed her. Right. But she would have probably called the cops or said, I hit her or she would have turned it into some he put his hands on me. You know what I'm saying? Just like how women would usually say, he put his hands on me, but would never tell you what happened before. It ends with, he put his hands on me. And that's where the story begins. It's never what happened before. You know what I mean? So in that moment, um, I, I just, I walked her out, you know, and crazy thing, <laughs> because I had had sex with her like previously before, right? And when I was walking her out, that's when she confessed to me, like, you know, and this is the first time I ever knew about this. She was like, yo, she has a man and they've been together for five years. And I guess he's been doing, you know, he's been cheating on, on her. So I was kind of like the guy that she was kind of like seeking revenge on the guy with, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't even know what was going on, but I guess, you know, Come in and kick it with me. She probably felt guilty and she broke down. So instead of having her drive drunk, I ended up, you know, having her stay, you know, overnight because I'm like, yo, just 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 stay over here. And, 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 and you know, what I mean, I don't want you to drive out and then something happened to you. I, I'll still feel guilty today. I would have kicked her out. You know what I'm saying? Um, Because I realized it's like. There's this thing where we we're taught, and I get it, the chivalry, and we gotta have care for women, and we gotta treat them a certain way. But you know, you get older, and you realize, yo, listen, women can be monsters too. You know, they can do what angels do, and they can also be monsters too, and they can play victims. You know, they they have they they got the capability to say, I'm equal with you because you're. You know, because we're human, we're equal. And then they can flip it and play a victim, you know? 
um, and then say, oh my God, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. I'm a woman. So just understanding that, um, you know, I deal with women in a very fair manner. And now it's very transactional how I deal with how I deal with women, um, um, because they can be monsters too. A lot of men get set up by women. Women do as much damage as men, but you know um, they have this thing where they can hide and play victim. But to you know to end it off is just you know pondering on that whole Chris Brown situation. I'm like, yeah, that's self defense, but it was it's like a taboo to talk about because we like Rihanna. I like Rihanna too. I love her music. Um, and the funny thing is, Blueface said it. He said, "Yo, you should have beat up a hood, a hood rat." You know, he got Krishan. They do the the domestic violence thing, and it's funny because Krishan is a woman putting her hands on Blueface, and they getting paid for it. It's entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Um, but Chris Brown, his you know career has been tainted with the whole Rihanna situation. So it is what it is, but. Um, it's something that I, you know, I've been thinking about. Expression is gold. Okay, vulnerability. Um, I think I can, I can sit on the big chair for this one. Um, Expression is gold. Boom. So vulnerability, right? Let me try to be as transparent as possible. Let me try to act like nobody's watching me right now, and let me just close my eyes and really dive into it. Um. Sometimes I have a beautiful fantasy being with a woman, loving her, her loving me, um, being transparent with her, dealing with her crap, her dealing with my crap, going through issues and fixing it. I mean, I even imagine like almost cheating on her and then running into the bathroom of the girl that I was about to cheat on her with and then calling her and saying, Bae, I was about to do some heinous things, but I thought about you. And then she drives and she comes and scoop me and she's mad at me for a month, but she still understands that like, I never cheated and I still care about her. And then we go to therapy and she's yelling at me and then she let it go and we have another kid. <laughs> But then sometimes I think about, man, why would I trap myself in that? It's my life. I get, I get, to, I get to live it however I want. So why don't I just go make a baby in Brazil? Go make a baby in Tokyo? Go make a baby in Mozambique? Have all these beautiful women. And then have all these kids. And then have them all build my empire. Have them work for me. You know? One of my kids could be a doctor, one could be a, law a lawyer, a soccer player, a basketball player, and just have a whole bunch of kids and a whole bunch of beautiful women, you know, have an empire and have these women because I have all these kids with, with them. Now they have, they're attached to me, their kids are attached to me, and I'm the head man in charge commanding my community. And... I'm always occupied and I can always nut, you know? So I always, I have a variety of women to go to, you know? And I'm mad at you, so I go kick it with this one. You broke, so I go do business with this one. But I come to you because you can handle my pain. I got all these options. Can one woman handle all of that? You know, can one woman give me all the kids that I need and handle all my pain, my love, my this, my that, and me still be satisfied with her? You know? Um, welcome to the psyche of a man. So, you know, I go through that. And, you know, I just don't know. I don't have an answer, man. I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer, man. Like, you know, there's women that I see and I'll be like, yeah, I can have a spiritual connection with this woman. I think we can have a future. But then when they do something that I don't like, I'm like, yeah, man, that future is, that's fugazi. It was cap. Mm -mm, it wasn't real. So, you know, 
But I know one thing, it's my life. And I'm the I'm the Shakespeare and I write my future, you know, and what I thinketh becometh. Did Shakespeare ever say that? I don't know. <laughs> but um at the end of the day, I think um still figuring it out. <laughs> Tell them expression is gold. So I, I studied abroad in Peru, right? Had an amazing time. Got Even got on TV in Peru. They won a soccer match and I was celebrating with the people and I got on TV. I was like, today, I'm not American, I'm Peruvian. Phew, great, great moment, all right? I went to Brazil for my birthday while I was living in Peru. I was studying abroad. I didn't go back to Peru because I fell in love with Brazil. So all my belong belongings was in Peru. Just imagine that. I just go there for a week to celebrate my birthday. And I'm like, I'm living here because this is dope. It's a dope place. And I'm not going back to Peru. Um, before I got to Brazil, I went to Argentina first, right? So I'm living in Peru, travel to Argentina, and then go to Brazil. I met, an, I met a Brazilian girl in Argentina, right? We had sex. We became cool. We got connected. I go to Brazil. I'm like, oh my God, they are so beautiful. Oh my God, right? The girl that I met in Argentina, she happens to be traveling in Peru months down the line and we're in communication. I don't even know how we got back in communication. And she's like, she's in Peru. And I said, yo, my laptop is in Peru. Can you go get it? And when you come to Brazil, bring it to me. Can y'all see how crazy that is? She goes to my host family's crib and grabs my laptop. And then when she comes back to Brazil, we meet in Rio and she gives me my laptop. Now, here is, you know, where, you know, it's kind of messed up, okay? So when she met me in Brazil, she wanted to have sex again. But at that time, I was so in tune and occupied with all the women in Brazil that her beauty had diminished. Imagine you see one Brazilian, you're like, ooh, you fire. We have sex. But then I touch down in Brazil and I'm like, whoa, oh, y'all lava. Y'all more than fire, y'all lava. And then the one that you thought was, ooh, fire comes around and then you're like, girl, listen, I know you just brought me my laptop. What you did was amazing all the way from Peru. You could have taken that. I would have never seen you again, but you brought it to me. But I can't have sex with you. She was very upset. She never spoke to me again. Maybe like six months down the line, I'm in a guest house and somebody steals a laptop. And you may think it's karma. Um, but you know how I got the laptop? Maybe four years before I was working in the movie theater and somebody left the laptop in one of the, the spots that I was cleaning when I was young. And that's how I got the laptop. So that laptop <laughs> was a traveling mother ever, it? <laughs> Yo, I jacked the laptop. Jacked it. The person came back looking for their laptop. I said, I ain't never seen it. And my manager, I was, at that time, I was having sex with my manager at the movie theater. She didn't even know, but she defended me. She's like, yeah, he don't know nothing. You feel me? Because I was penetrating her. <laughs> Years later, leave it in Peru. A girl goes and get it for me and brings the laptop to Brazil. She mad because I didn't give her no penis. And then, grah, months later, somebody grabs the laptop, it's gone. I don't know where this laptop is, but whoever took that laptop, I promise you, I bet you, somebody stole it from them too. I bet you on that. But um, this is kind of like one thing that I like did to a, wo a woman that I still regret to this day. Or I guess one thing I didn't do, right? Because I think when she got to Brazil and she gave me that laptop, I was supposed to give her some dick. I, I think I was supposed to. I think it was my duty. 
I should have went on my knees. I should have licked her pussy. I should have given her some dick. Even if it was grade D dick, it would have been enough for her because she liked me. But at that time, I was too infatuated with the other fish in the sea. Yeah. So that's my laptop story. Tell them expression is gold. Um, it's misogyny real. I can be transparent about this. Uh, let me stream these thoughts, okay? Um, misogyny, it's misogyny real. Um, no, it's not real. Um, what's real is hate. Hate is real. Misogyny is not real. Um, so it depends whoever is, is, is acting, you know? Um, whoever is taking a certain action, that's how people, um, will base their judgment. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I see people hate Andrew Tate and he has all these, uh, allegations on his name. Um, but I bet you the same woman who will go on Twitter or on social media and bash Andrew Tate voted for Biden and Biden has allegations too. And I'm not saying any of it is real or not, right? That's not the point. The point is people pick and choose. You know what I'm saying? So if people pick and choose, right, then why, when is misogyny real? It's just about who you favor, who suits you. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, there are women that if they like a guy and the guy tells them to sit over there, they will sit there. If another guy tell them to do the same thing, they will call it, they will say it's misogynistic. You know, if some rapper says, you know, I don't love no hoes, they would twerk to it. Another rapper comes and say the same thing. Oh, you're a misogynist. You know what I mean? So is misogyny real? It depends who you love and who you hate. So love is real and hate is real. And it's who you love and who you hate, you know? Um, how is misogyny a real thing? And women hate misogyny so much. And, and you know, in, in the black culture, you know, uh, black women are very religious. And black women take their sons and daughters and they bring them to the church. And the Bible literally says God is a he. So God has chosen he over she. <laughs> The most powerful being is a he. And the Bible says women should not even speak when men are talking. And you take your kids and you teach them. You take them and you say the word of God does not change according to the Bible, right? And you got to live by it, right? So that means women should always fall behind men. You know what I mean? So if that's misogyny and you take your kids to the church, how do you say misogyny is real? How do you... You say you're against misogyny, you know, the, the first book that you want your kids, the book of life that you want your kids to abide by promotes a man being ahead of you. So are you against misogyny? Is misogyny real? You know what I mean? Um, so we all play on words, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, words are spells, you know, um, and these spells are used to, um, to create narratives and propaganda. Um, so two people can do the same thing and they can have two different labels. And when you understand that, um, it helps you operate in this world. Um, so if you ask me if misogyny is real, I'll say no. Misogyny is real, I'll say no, you know. But hate and love, that's what I'll say, it's real. Those, those two things, you know, um, that's what's real. Fear is real too, but yeah. Hate, love, fear. Those three things are real. Tell them expression is gold. All right, personality. Uh, so I've been following the Boosie and T.I. situation. And, you know, let me, let me keep it real. Boosie is a voice of people who... Um, are scared to speak their opinion and, you know, they live vicariously through Boosie. They champion Boosie because he's not afraid to become the sacrificial lamb for them. And they're scared to lose their friends or their job or family members or partners or whatever it is, right? 
Um, so I respect Boosie for that. Now, when it comes to this whole street thing, right? Um, I don't have anything against the streets, right? I'm from the streets, right? Um, anybody that is coming from a less fortunate environment where you don't actually live by government laws, you live by your own community laws and you live by unwritten rules on how y'all find your own ways to, um, uh, um, um, create your own community to compete with, you know, the common society, right? And the common standard that's set to say, hey, this is success. You know what I'm saying? When you're coming from a less fortunate situation, you got to go through your own route to be able to compete with this level. And with your own route comes finesse, shortcuts, finessing. You know what I'm saying? And when you're coming from those less fortunate situations, you know, I call them the street, the soil, people from Africa, the mountains, people from like the favela, Brazil, those areas, South America, you know, and then in the ends, that would be like Europe, UK, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I come from those environments, right? You know what I'm saying? Where I seen somebody get killed and the police didn't do anything. Police stood right there. You understand what I'm saying? You know, um, that's not how America operates. Like if somebody's you know, is being beat to death from start to finish, the cop is going to do something, you know. Um, but when we have our own community and we have our own laws in our hands, you know what I'm saying, that's like mob mentality, that's street vibes, you feel me? Um, so we have our own rules, right? And some of the rules is no snitching, right? Um, but as we get older, we realize that those rules... Um, are just like how politics are, right? On the higher level where you have the government, right? You know, um, it's, ho it's all how you interpret it. And it's all who is connected, who is friends. So here come Boosie who's saying today, it's like T.I. out of his mouth said he um, snitched on his dead cousin, right? And I actually agree if somebody's dead, Pay his family and put uh, um, uh, um, the case on a dead person and come out and the family should tax you. Like, all right, every month, every year, this, bring us this and we'll put it on a dead person and you can be free. And the benefit is that you are free and because you are out and free and working, you can actually pay a debt for utilizing uh, a dead family member to set yourself free. I think that's a great business, man. A lot of people will come out of jail on that. T.I. said, yo, he told on his cousin. He backtracked, but he said it out of his mouth, right? Boosie said, that's ratting. And then Boosie come out and, and you know, after every this backlash everywhere, da 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 Boosie come out. Boosie said, yo, he apologized to T.I. for it. But he apologized because T.I. was doing a lot for him. Whereas in the same case, Boosie has said, other people who have snitched, right, should get penalized for being rats and snitching and all of that. But when it comes to your friend who is doing something for you, he gets a pass and you apologize to him for shunning him. For the young ones, it's essentially for you to understand that the streets, it's not real, you know. As much as we exist in it and... Certain codes are like played out day by day. It's not real as in the world is bigger than the streets. That's really what I'm saying. The world is bigger than the streets. So when you confine yourself, yourself to the rules of the streets, you don't actually live. Because the people that are upholding the streets, their kids are going to private schools. They have police protecting them when they do shows. You know what I'm saying? They live in outside of all the codes, but they only just enforcing the code because they want you to be a fan and they want you to buy their album and they want you to follow them. And once again, you become the sheep, right? 
And maybe you like to be that. That's cool. But it's the same thing with politics. Whenever somebody's running for president, hey, I'm going to give y'all reparations. Y'all need reparations. Student loan debts, I'm going to handle it. And then when you give them the vote, they disappear. You know what I'm saying? So it's always like the people at the bottom gets duped. But the people at the bottom sometimes love to be followers and they just need a voice of hope. And that voice of hope can lie to them and say, hey, you know, you're going through this, but you're going to get out of it. Keep the codes, keep the rules, stay true to yourself. But it's like, how do you stay true when you're at the bottom? Staying true is staying, remaining broke, you know? So sometimes they make you feel like you got to continue doing what you are doing. While they are not continuing doing what you are doing, and that is why they've been able to escape the confines in the street or the soil or the favela or the whatever, they've been able to escape that because they had to live by a different codes. They had to expand their codes. They had to rip the codes apart so that they can live outside of it and they can prosper and be able to live in the suburbs and be able to drive Bigger cars and this and that, 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 but then they tell you, stay true, stay down, don't change. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I caught the hypocrisy with Boosie when he was talking about how he apologized to T.I., you know what I'm saying? Because he has talked about other people in not such a nice way, and those people were accused of snitching, you know what I'm saying? Um, so at the end of the day, if you're in the streets, this is what you got to understand. The feds run the streets. So if you're in the streets, you work for the feds. The feds know what you're doing. You work for the feds. So, um, <clears throat> your homie, if there's 10 of y'all and all y'all is very active, it's probably three or four or five of y'all that's telling the feds everything that's happening. And then the rest, you know, you're working. And you just got to pass. And you don't know when they're going to come get you. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, knowing me knowing that the feds run the streets and the feds have more power than the street dudes. And understanding that, it's like, wow. <laughs> Living by street codes is a limitation to a human being, especially a man, especially a black man, you literally dim your consciousness. The world is so vast. These people have gone to the moon. They've created computers. You think they live by street codes to be able to do that? They expand their mind. The curiosity that these people have is why they've been able to take over the world. And you Turn off your curiosity as a human being and you just live by street codes and you box yourself in and you are just like a rat in a little tiny space roaming around living in an imagination that you are a solid person. No, you are trapped. Expression is gold. Miscellaneous, that's what I'll leave y'all with. I'll make it short. There's memories that you make that comes from the people that you associate with and the environment that you were born in or the environment that you grow up in. And there's your conscious state. That when you are in that conscious state, you can always make a change. Um, so imagine this. If you live in New York, and people know you a certain way. When you go to Morocco, you can become a whole totally different person because the people there don't know you. You can change your name. You can change how you talk. You can change your accent. So you are very powerful. You're very powerful and you are not your memories. You are not your environment. As much as they are attached to you, when I say you are not that, I'm, all I'm saying is you are not just that. You're not just black. You're not just a father. You're not just a mother. You're not just whatever you have trapped yourself in that you're trying to figure out. Insanity is 
doing the same thing and expecting different results. You have to become all of it. You have to experience life in its entirety. The desires that you have in your head and the imaginations that you have in your head are real. The reason why they keep coming back to you, it's because they will fulfill you. You can choose not to venture into those desires, of course, but it will hurt and you can accept the hurt and live by the hurt. But to set yourself free, you will have to break your boundaries and try those new things and you will become more of yourself, more of a human, more of this experience, you know? And sometimes you will lose friends, you will lose family members, you will lose whatever. But you will gain new beautiful things, beautiful experiences, beautiful human beings around you that you didn't even know existed. And all you have to do is just accept that you just not are one thing. You are all of it. And you can always become, you can always change, you can always adapt, you know? And the, one of the beautiful things in life is even the people that see you one way, when you change, because you don't work hard to stay the same, right? Oh, so when you do change, it may take them three weeks to accept you or a month or two years or three years, but they will have to adapt to whoever you become. And then when you become that and you need to graduate again, you can reinvent yourself because you have the power to do so. Every time that you are in your conscious state and you are thinking and you are alive and you are in this moment, you have the power to create yourself again. Okay, how?